your boy Young Chateau, man. What's going on, world? It's the big homie DJ JT the Don. Girl, Alana D. Bridge Janae, aka Miss Low Body. Hey, I'm Zaza Satanica. Tune in to Chi Town. Chi Town. Chi Town. Chi Town. Chi Town. Listening to Chi Town. Urban Radio on UBM Jams. Chicago Urban Radio. Also have interviews on here, so you may never know who's in the hot seat. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Well, you get the idea. Call into the show. And let's bring in our host. Please welcome DJ Malone. My check one two one two. Side Town Number Radio, the best place to be at on the Wednesday night. Six day with your boy DJ Malone. Oh man! Now you guys know I love to bring you the hottest artists, the hottest people in Chicago or any place really. And today, man, it's no exception. Now, tell me down just a little bit because right? I want people to, I want people to feel where I'm coming from with this. Um, this guy right here. Been knowing this guy for about, you know, three to four years, man. Um, real humble guy. I met him on the workout video, and we've been rocking ever since. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, will you please welcome Aaron Muhammad. What's going on? How you feeling? Doing good, bro. Doing good. How you feeling, Fred? Uh, I'm here, man. Um, I'm, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Pleasure to finally make it here, man. So we've been busy. You know how I am. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> You're a busy man. Always. <laughs> they call you the the uh, the Barack Obama of the Chicago. That's what they that's what they calling you. Yeah, baby Obama, baby Barack. I get that a lot. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, tell tell my listeners a little bit about you, who you are, what you do. Cool, no problem, man. So, really, man, I just done a little bit of everything in the game. Really, bit focusing on mark marketing artists. Okay. Booking artists, managing artists. I've been doing that for a little over about six years now. Okay. So I started up uh, really promoting you know uh, young R and B artists coming up in the city. Getting them shows, getting them booked into places that normally they couldn't get into. And then slowly but surely they were like, hey, you know, we need managers too. So I started managing them. Did press kits, they became their promoter, did a little bit of everything. You know, jack of all trades, what I do. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so let me ask you this. Now, um, in this game, yeah. um, how important do you think it is to know the business, to know the aspect of, you know, the ins and out of the music game? Oh, dude, it's like, it's it. It's like any other business. You gotta know really like how to do your infrastructure. You gotta really understand the ins and outs first. You know, some yeah. people just jump right in. They're like, oh, I can sing, I can dance, I can even rap, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. But that's not really what gets you ahead. It's knowing how to network, it's knowing how to set up your business. You have to do that first and foremost. Kind of understand just how to read a contract, write a contract, that kind of stuff. Because that's the stuff that's gonna make and break you, and that's the stuff that's gonna get you the farthest. Definitely. Definitely, man. We we here with my guy, man. Um, if you guys want to tune in, make sure you tune into that uh, Urban Broadcast Media app. Go download it right now. If you haven't done it, same on you. Download that Urban Broadcast Media app right now. You can also listen to us on that Tune In app, but you already got it. Um, we got my man right here. We're gonna be talking to him um, a lot this this uh this show. So uh, we're gonna get into the mix and just a little bit. Me playing all your hip hops and R and B and. Everything else like that, you know, you know how I get down here on Side Town Number Radio. Um, we got my boy Young Side Town doing the, uh, the video. Make sure you guys, if you guys need anything, get at him. I'm telling you, it's uh, he does good work, Aaron, man. Hey, it's, it, we're gonna have a good time, man. I'm so happy that you're here, though, man. Oh, dude, we're having a great time now. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, definitely, man. Hey, make sure you guys follow the social media at Side Town Number Radio. Um, we're gonna be here. Six day with your boy DJ Malone, man. Uh, you got a Facebook, Twitter, anything you want to plug? Yes, sir. You know, hit me up on uh, let's see, uh, Ash Shy Brother. I also changed it up for uh, Instagram, so it's Impro Ltd, which is the company, but also the label Do For Self Records. That Do For Self Records. We're gonna get into Do For yeah. Self because he, he, this dude has a lot. You, like I said, notice how I say you want to get into this guy. <laughs> you want to know this guy. Notice how I say that. So uh, we're here, man. Uh, so uh, before we get into the mix, I want to ask you now: do for do uh, do for yourself, do for self, do for self. Now I want to ask you this: what what where, where did that name come from? Oh, sure, no problem. So do for self is actually uh, it's actually a statement of movement that's been around for well over 40, 50 years. 
okay? But the idea was brought into the whole record label by the CEO and co-founder of the label, Mr. Palmer, Mr. Larnell Palmer II. Definitely. He started the label, do for self, um, and he wanted to be truly incorporate it. So that's when we hooked up. I helped him incorporate the label, and we called it Do For Self Records. And the whole movement is about actually artists doing for self. We go out there, we make our shows. We go out there, we actually produce and print our own stuff. We go out there, we establish our own distribution. It's not waiting for somebody else to do it. You go out there and do for yourself. Definitely, definitely, man. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to get into the mix real quick. It's your boy, DJ Malone, Sex Out Number Radio. Let's go. Let's go. Side Town Urban Radio, the best place to be at on a Wednesday night, six day with your boy, man. We're still here with my guy, man. We're gonna really get into him, man. It was good. Now we talked about the music thing, and and you and you manage models as well. Yeah. So how did you get into that aspect of the, of the situation? Oh, like I said, jack of all trades. So I actually started a women's fitness apparel line. Okay. And I needed models for the photo shoot. Had the photographers, had all that stuff, had even the locations. Obviously, had the clothing. But we just need the model. So, um, actually, at the time, I was a retail manager. Okay. And what better way to meet women in retail? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, slowly but surely, just like, okay, I scoped one, one young lady. I was like, okay, you know, talk to her, find out if she's interested in whatever. They were, you know, the few ladies that were interested in really getting into the modeling game. You okay. know, I made sure it understood, hey, I do contracts. It's a full business. It's, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, everything. You get to keep your original pictures. And they were all looking to get into modeling, which was perfect. You yeah. know, it's about uh, three or four of them. So, you know, every day, come to work, I'm like, okay, well, I got one down. I got to find another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's go about the women's apparel. Okay, let's go about the, you know, the, the, the body wash section and everything. See if we were shopping over there, you know. And, and yeah, so we just really found new models, found new models, and... It's like, you know what, I might as well do this as a business because I already had the connections, I already yeah. had the network. I was building websites and stuff for the for the apparel line. Okay. They wanted websites for themselves. I was like, okay, well, I could book other gigs for them. Real. So it was it's it's the, kind of the same thing. Like models and artists, it's almost in the same same bucket, Real. you know, it's all talent. So it just became became a, like an automatic thing to just start managing them too. Okay, definitely, definitely. Now, do you ever do you ever find yourself with the models, um, it's very they get attitude because I manage models, <laughs> okay. and it's like sometimes they get <laughs> attitude. They get very what's the word I'm looking for? Um, prissy. That's what I would say. <laughs> it can happen. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but no, man. It's like any other business. Managing. It's all about managing people. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing that was really funny. Like I said, I was a retail manager for years, and. It's the exact same respect. You have to you have to keep in mind that it's, this is a whole other person, another individual, but they have their own way of thinking about themselves. And you know, some people just think they're a little bit higher than some other people. Really? But they're a model person. Really? You know, if they're an artist, they feel like, okay, I deserve certain things because I'm a talent. I have this really? ability, and you know. But you, you just kind of have to respect that that's their yeah, mindset. But then once again, just like with anything else, bring them back down to earth and say, hey, this is still a business. You hire me to be your manager. So I have your best interest. I have our best interest. You know? Definitely. And it, at the end of the day, it's about both of us getting money out of this. And it's about you getting your name out there. Yeah. It's about me getting my name out there. So I think if you keep that respect of the business and you keep that first and foremost, you should be good. Okay, so, definitely. I, I think um try it out let me know how it works out okay <laughs> <laughs> hey hey that's just how it goes that's just how it is man we here at Town of a radio um three well the call lines ain't, ain't going on so i can't even say that i'm so used to saying that it's I, this, this, I second nature to you it, it's just it ram 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 <laughs> but um okay definitely so the music game man is it's like i told you just formulated for hit or misses but let me ask you this what would be Let's go with this route (laughs) Let's go in this Okay I just think that A lot of people They don't understand Business And it really bothers me Because like Oh I want to get paid souls But you can't bring A soul in the club (laughs) You can't bring Anybody in the club Man oh man He's preaching the choir On that one So (laughs) As a manager Like what advice Would you give Like say like Somebody comes up to you Right 
what, what? How do you go about that assessment? Because I know there's like an assessment period where they, you come on. What What are you working with? What can I mm-hmm. What can I manage? Basically, you know what I'm saying. Like in yourself, like if somebody will come to me as a model, what can I manage? Right. Well, no, and I'm glad you said it's like an assessment period because literally that, that first meeting I always had with them, I would say, bring me everything you've done. I don't want to see and everything you're working on. I don't want to hear, oh, you know how every artist, well, I've been doing this, I got this going. Okay, but let me see it. The proof is in the pudding. Really? So let me actually see past shows that you've booked. Let me actually see, you know, how many people are at your, at least at your Facebook, at least liking your Facebook something. Really? Let me see how many units you've actually moved in music. Because, like you said, at the end of the day, when it comes to booking a show, it's about how many people can you guarantee come through that door yeah, and make that that um, venue owner or that booking agent or your manager even money. Because right. these people only get paid when you're bringing in souls into that building. Real, so real. it is, let me see your experience. And if you don't have that, then prepare for this. Prepare, you're going to have to lay at least a good three to six months of groundwork to build that fan base, real. to build that audience. Because... You're not going in making 10 G's, 20 G's, and you can't even book. You can't even get one person to come through the door. Exactly. You you can't even get ten dollars a head. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm talking about. See, and and my thing is is that, um, and I tell all this. And I was telling this all this the other a couple of weeks ago is that you have a hundred dudes on stage with you. Oh come on. A hundred dudes hard. on stage with you, but how many of them oh, really oh, bought oh. your album? How many of them actually bought? A, a single off of iTunes. Oh, Lord. But you have a hundred dudes. Let me see. Half naked. <laughs> oh, well, that's all. I don't know what kind of show you went to. But, <laughs> but let me say, that's like the, my biggest pet peeve. I used to I used to run a show. Okay, I used to run a show. It was actually up north on the north side of Chicago. And this one artist, it was supposed to be just him and his, you know, basically like his hype man or whatever. And he had four, no, sorry, he had like five extra people behind him. And I was like, okay, where did they come? He's like, oh, they're more for the stage. I'm like, what stage? Like, you, your hype man, and that's it. Everybody else pays. And he's like, well, oh, I told my guys they come in for free. I said, wait a minute, you got to remember, you're getting paid based on who comes through the door. And then exactly. he stopped. And he turned around, I need my 20, I need 20 hours from each one of y'all. Exactly. So if these people aren't supporting you and investing in you, you know, how can you actually say they're your boys? Like, I know there are people in my family, my friends. I could call them and say, hey, I'm going to perform. I'm going to do this show. I need y'all to pay at least five, ten bucks a head because that's coming to me. Of course, we got your back. Exactly. That's, that, that's a team. That, no, exactly. not, not your boys who are willing to mooch off you. That's a team. So, exactly, man. Yeah. <laughs> We're here, man. We're talking real, though, man. You guys need to listen, man, because you can learn a lot. You can learn a lot from the conversation. Um, again, it's just a fun question, man. Um, top five. Top five artists Ooh. of uh, all time. Let's uh, let's do it like that. All right. Um, dang, man. Took it to back to the Chris Rock movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, wait. First off, all time, any artist, any genre. Any genre. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm cool with sure any that. genre. That's tough with, that's tough with rap and hip hop, but um, not in order, but okay, my top five are Tupac, definitely. Okay. Um, yeah, DMX. Okay. His one's gonna throw you for a loop. Pearl Jam. Oh wow. <laughs> Love Pearl Jam. Real Pearl Jam. Man. Okay. Um a little bit more modern. Uh look, Lincoln Park. I love Lincoln Park. Yes, Lincoln Park definitely. Yeah, I love home. the fact that they had, they were totally diverse. But after Oh, duh, my fault. Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Jackson. Just because he, he turned like music videos and everything into true entertainment. Yeah. And I think that's what was truly missing when he really set it off in the late seventies, early eighties. He made it entertaining. He shows you videos, could be movies, everything. You know, that's that he's an all-time entertainer for me. Real, real. Yeah. Let me ask you a real question though. Do you think in this day of age in 2016, do you think we're missing that wow factor now? Like there's nothing that can really wow people anymore. Mm. Like like how Michael Jackson thriller was mm-hmm. to me. Like that was a wow factor video to me. So it's like, do you think in 2016 Without dumbing yourself down, I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we can always do stupid stuff, you but that. like you know, something that's really entertaining, real talent, right? Artistic and unique. And exactly. Everything. You got a point there, man. It's really hard to top like what we've seen past pretty much after like 2005. It's pretty much everything's been done. Really? If you can think. I mean, don't get me wrong. Somebody will come up with something, but it's gonna be pretty amazing. I mean, besides like. You know, performing on the moon or something I don't know hey, that, <laughs> Right now well, It might know. be something though. I mean that might be, sorry, You never know I mean we can take flights To the moon apparently So why not Hey <laughs> Why can't we <laughs> But yeah I think I think um In I 
don't know. It's like it's tough to say. Like in, in, in my thing is music has gone down so much and it's getting watered down. It's like right. I think in two thousand I always say in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, I think that's when it kinda started when Soldier Boy came out. <laughs> we crank that. Don't, don't blame him though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's a lot of other people you can blame. Don't blame him. I blame young Doug <laughs> because nobody can understand what this guy is saying and he's dressing like <laughs> he's a he's a guy in pumps. But hey, you know what? At the end of the day, it's what the fans want. It's all about what the people want. If people are gonna make them popular, people gonna make them popular. That's the that's the scary part about it. Definitely, you know. But yeah, I believe artists do need to step up their game and become artists again, as opposed to just hey, what gets me hot right now for today and that's it. You know what threw me off when when they announced Welvin the Great, the guy, the got him guy. Yeah. When he came to Chicago, went to Adriana's, they announced him like he was an artist on <laughs> Power ninety two. Welvin the Great at Adriana's, be there tonight. What are you doing? It's all you got. It's all you got. It's what you got. It's all you got. I can't. I can't not. I mean, definitely. Okay, definitely, man. Yeah, man, man. We're having a good time. Um, um, let me ask you uh, another question. Another fun question. Uh, Give me three albums in your in your lifetime that really meant something to you. Mm, Okay. Well, mentioned definitely. Like I said, Pearl Jam is one of my favorite art, uh, favorite bands of all time. So ten. Okay. Ten albums for sure. Um, man, this is toughy after that one. You know, Shock didn't even know how to say Eminem, but his first EP. Okay. His first EP. The one um, with um, Stan? Stan, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, I think this is because that spoke to a lot of people, no matter race, diverse, you know, it didn't matter. Yeah, it just yeah. spoke to a lot of different people, that whole EP. Every track everybody can relate to. But like you even said, Stan, I mean, even though it was more like a reflection of him, a lot of people could relate to it because it was just that kind of like yeah. that, that, that time where people were just kind of confused. Uh, young people, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then, um, and I mentioned it because it was one of my formative years. Linkin Park, their very first album, A Hybrid Theory. I that love was just that. Like, that album right there, In the End. Yes. I mean, it, God, I'm it, done with it that. It had man. everything. It had everything. It had your aggression getting it out, it had your energy getting it out, but also had your creativity and showing the eclectic nature of music, you know? Do you think music, and when we talk about music nowadays, do you think. Like I can't even remember the last album that really had substance that really made me. And I'm not saying that I liked all, all the all the tracks on all the albums I ever heard, but at least I got the message what you were trying to right. come across. Right, and, and that's that goes back to just simple art development. They don't understand a lot of artists don't understand an album is a story. Like that's that's what I said. Michael Jackson put that together. You could it was a whole story. Every track was a piece of the story. It was every chapter of the story. Now it's kind of like, okay, this track is good. This track sounds nice. This track is good. This is gonna be the single, and that's it. Really? You know, it's it's not like you said. I didn't. You can't understand. It's like maybe one grabs you, and then you're like, oh, that's good. But then the other ones are like, well, what the? That don't even fit. Exactly. You know, and that's where the ARs used to come in handy. That's where all those people came in handy. And ARs are not even the same anymore. No. Uh, it's just because. Even whenever, because I don't think a lot of artists know that when you sit down with a label, they actually li- you actually listen to what album or what track right. is going to be. That's like right. track placement used to be a priority right. thing. That's right. Um, I'm I'm still a big fan of you know an album and when you put out something, yeah. you want it to make sense. You want it to make people understand why you're you're saying that. Yeah, you want quality, you know, and that that's it's gotten a lot away from quality. Like you said, it used to be a whole listening session. Listening session was not just a one day thing. That was sometimes weeks, maybe exactly. months. Exactly. You know, pe- I mean, you can hear people talk about that all the time in all kinds of interviews. Babyface, you know, uh, Clive Davis. That was a session. That was literally me sitting down listening to your music. Like, I listen to artist music sometimes nowadays. And they're like, well, why aren't you talking? Why aren't you? I'm listening to your music. I'm listening exactly. to what you're about to put out because I'm thinking about not only is that going to sell, but also this don't even make no damn sense. <laughs> exactly. You know? So exactly. it's a, it, they really have a lot of artists have lost the understanding and study of the craft. Real. Mm-hmm. Real. Uh, now, if somebody if somebody wanted to come up to you and, and you know ask for management, are you accepting right now or how does that go about? With management, you know, being real with you. I totally gotten away from just straight management. It's okay. more like a consult, more consulting, okay. focusing on consulting, okay. focusing okay. on the, the marketing, the building of your fan base, the building of your audience, that kind of thing. Because that's where a lot of artists nowadays, that's where they need the most help. Yeah. Let them work on their craft because that that's what record labels used to come in handy for. Yeah. But now focus strictly on more the consulting, marketing of you, getting you out there. 
preparing you, putting you in a place where you can actually be profitable for yourself. Real. In a profitable way. Maybe if you want to go into a record label, uh, maybe you want to be, you know, shoppable as they call it, or you want to be shopped around and pitched Real. to a record label. But yes, yeah, more more I take my time. But management, man, I've done so much stuff in management. <laughs> I've aged like a thousand times managing artists. So I'm kinda <laughs> done with that. I'm only thirty. I'm Definitely. done. <laughs> Definitely. Hey man, we're having a good time here. Um uh, before, we got a couple more questions before you go, but I want to ask you this: uh, What are you doing for Valentine's, man? I mean, I, I know yeah. you're going to doing something for for your lady and stuff. Man, I wish I could do something with my lady, you know, in person. My lady actually is in New York. Okay, she lives in New York. Um, last year, I took a trip there. Last time, I went to actually go uh, okay. spend some time with her in New York, but. Right now, you know, it's pretty much all going to be talking on the phone. Hey, hey, there ain't Chilling nothing wrong with that. There's yeah, nothing wrong with but that. I might go to the auto show. <laughs> okay, okay. Before that. You know? Definitely, okay, definitely. Hey, uh, I ain't mad at though. I, I think even, see, when I was when I was growing up, and now, you know, I'm 27. So when I was growing up, we had AIM. You remember AIM, like the AOL yeah. Instant Messenger? Yeah. That was my jam right there. Um, and this is before, you know, we had, you know, advanced, advanced cell phones. Exactly. Like, I had a flip phone and... Man, you pull out a CD-ROM or a floppy disk on anybody nowadays, man. <laughs> my, my my daughter thinks I'm crazy. My daughter, hey, because I could see... Um, all right, so we went to um, where I used to live in the 100. Right. And, I, and I still have my old TV with okay. the with the back. I'm talking about the old school. Oh, dang, old rear projector? Yes. So she so was you like, still got the screwdriver. What was it? The pliers? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so she came in and she said, "Daddy, what's wrong with this TV? Why right. I got a back to it? That's how it used to be, Daddy. That's not good at all. That's not good. What's wrong with your TV, man? These kids don't know. Or VCRs. Or VC- hey, okay. I still had my DV. I had a DVD VCR up until maybe three years ago. Hey, because I still kept those VHS. I'm like, they still working, aren't they? Hey, the v- <laughs> in some ways, the VHS works better than DVDs. They don't get scratched. I do give you that. I do give you that. And they actually supposedly last longer. I don't know about that. One, they. Pro- I think I think if you take care of them or yeah. store them away and then bring them back, then yeah, maybe. Yeah. But you know what? Technology is just becoming crazy because now um, I'm thinking in like in the next three or four years, okay. what they're gonna do with DVDs now is um, either it's gonna be streamed or you know you know you get it on Pretty demand or whatever. But now they're gonna you're gonna get these little memories cards. So you get you get this little memory box or whatever. And then you buy the memory box, and okay. the memory box is like a terabyte of five hundred gigs or whatever. Okay. And then you go to the stores, and then you buy the memory thing that has the the file on it, like the MP, like a, not like MP3, like a, what do you call it, like SD card, or yeah, something like that. yeah. God, what? That's, that's what I've been, I was reading that, and like in the next three or four years, they're gonna start coming out with those. I mean, that makes sense. It's cheaper, sure, it makes sense, and especially since they're putting all like the chips in your in your credit card, your debit card now. They exactly. everything's going to a smaller scale. Chip man, this is gonna be nuts. Hey man, some point where some stream right to your eyes. I'm scared. (laughs) I'm scared that the the, the hoverboards are taking over. I seen two. I seen people in the hood went doing hoverboarding. What are you doing? Hoverboard. Can you imagine? I mean, I hate to say this. I hate the thought of it, but you're like, what if somebody drive by on a hoverboard? (laughs) I seen it on um on YouTube that they were hover doing hovering things. Like uh, this dude went to the drive to on a hoverboard. What's wrong with this guy? Well, <sighs> they're moving into the new technology, man. That's what you got to do. It's too new you for have, me. You have to evolve. Right? I, I, I you guess, have to evolve. I guess so. Or you're going to get left behind. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, Aaron Muhammad is here with us, man. Uh, before you go, is there any advice you could give to an uh, upcoming artist or upcoming uh, model or anything to you know really help in this industry? Yeah, you know, really to help them. I mean, to help them in an industry, especially when they're just trying to break in. I mean, go for promotion or opportunities. Do not, you know, just don't think like an open mic or a free shoot or a time for, you know time for prints or something like that. It's completely outlandish. You know, I think. What people don't understand is that when you are saying, hey, I need to be paid this much for this much time. Well, really, what am I going to get back for that money? You know, what am I, am I just getting your time or am I getting your face? And that's going to actually get me likes and that's actually going to get me press. Exactly. That's going to get me published. You got to think it's a gift to get, you know, it, and when you're coming up and there's nothing wrong with the bar, barter system. There's nothing wrong with just networking. And we burn, especially young, younger people. They burn a lot of bridges because they think like, oh, man, well, I saw, heard this person getting this. That's that person. What about you? You need to break. You need to get your foot in the door. Like I said, I focus on the consulting and marketing of a lot of talent. And that's one of the things I tell them. You know, if you have no press, I can't do a press kit. 
Just as simple. Exactly. There is no PR if you have no press. Exactly. So you have to do your own PR. Get your footprint out there. Get your name out there. So take your promotional. Yeah. That's right. It's it's here. Yeah. yeah, it's here. <laughs> so definitely, man. Uh, I appreciate you coming in. For sure. Appreciate you having me, man. We finally got through it. <laughs> Give it to Facebook, Twitter, everything where they can find you. All right, for sure, man. Well, you can definitely find us at uh, doforselfrecords.com. That's our website, Do For Self Records on Facebook, at Do For Self Records. Um, definitely on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Myself, at uh, Shy Brother. That's, of course, the, the greatest city of all time. C-H-I, Chicago, definitely. brother. And uh, my company also is improltd.com, at improltd. That's definitely. on Instagram and Facebook. Definitely, man. Hey, I really do appreciate you coming through, stopping by the side town of a radio. Um, really, just you know, it's always good to have intelligent people, and I feel like you. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying though, like you know, um, what college did you go to before you go? What college? Did you go to? Uh, actually, I went right here in uh, Illinois, in Chicago, Illinois. I went to uh, Robert Morris University. Okay. So okay. yeah, it was when it was Robert Morris College, but yeah, right downtown, man. Just I went. I went to, while I was working. I went to Columbia. Um, well, that's what's up, right down the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I loved it. Uh, yeah, man. Um, what do you think about the Illinois situation with the, uh, you know, with this? I guess they're not paying up. Yeah. I mean, well, it's not paying up on so many things, but um, on the education tip, I mean, our city has just got a lot lot of work to do. It's hurting a lot of kids, you know, whether it be uh, public schools, even private schools. You know, we're not putting enough investment back into education like we should. Really? That comes from the community and then goes to the schools as well. But Illinois not paying up, that's nothing new, unfortunately. <laughs> our government hey. don't pay his debts. That's just a fact. Hey, man, we're here, man. Shout out to radio, man. Hey, uh, I'm going to be posting up your uh, your video soon on on, yes, sir, yes, sir. on our social media link. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you into the building, man. Because, yep, like I said, me and you've been going about four years. About yeah, it's about four years now. Yeah, four years now. So since the butterfly jeans suits and stuff. Man. Okay, yeah. okay, <laughs> definitely. So yeah, man, it's just um, this is a word of advice to people: when you build networks of people, no matter who they are, what they do, you always want to build up a network of people and um, keep good business. That's that's, right. that's the main thing. That's the main purpose. It's not about trying to, oh, I'm trying to get over you. I'm trying to get over. Exactly. It, at the end of the day, I feel like if you can um, make a good impact in people's lives and people know that you're for real and know that they take they take you as for real, mm-hmm. that's all that matters, man. That's, right. that's all really that matters. I'm going to finish it out with this. It's not what you know. It's who you know. But it's always good to know something, too. <laughs> hey, that's real. That's real, man. So uh, we here, man. Uh, you, any shout-outs you want to give out? Oh, uh, yeah. I'd just like to say, you know, what's up to everybody at the Duke for Self Records family. Uh, for sure, Larnell Palmer, my business partner. But also, I'd like to give a shout-out to my lovely lady in New York, Ramona. And, uh, yeah, best to everybody in Chicago. Let's just keep it going, but let's do it positively, finally. You know? did, did you send the flowers? Of course. <laughs> they have to. <laughs> I'm not trying to get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I appreciate you coming in, man. Uh, uh, we're gonna go into the mix real quick, and then we're gonna have my boy. He's here. He's here, man. He's so, arrived. um, if uh, if if there's anybody who wants to do business with this guy, make sure you please keep it professional. Yeah. That's the that's the moral of the story, man. Keep it professional. Keep it funky, and uh, let's all just have a good time. You know, that's just what that's what we in the music business for. Just business to have business. a good time. Have a good time and entertain us. Fine. Yeah, definitely. www.improltd.com www.doforselfrecords.com Do for Self Records. Make sure you guys uh any projects they they got coming out? Yes, uh, our main artist uh, Mr. Palmer just released his his uh, second EP, the Penthouse Soundtrack, and we actually about to do uh, about three cities in our tour, but we're going to start off of course kick it off here in Chicago starting on March 19th at the Phoenix Bar. Okay, what time? Uh, when, when was that? That is uh, Saturday, March nineteenth. Phoenix Bar is up on Montrose and Cicero, Northwest Side of Chicago, and that kicks off at nine p.m. Uh, tickets or just they no, just walk it's in? No, you can pay at the door. Pay, pay at the door. door. How much? Uh, Ten dollars. Ten dollars a head. Yep. That ain't nothing. No, no. It's gonna be on Facebook, on the website, but we're also gonna be pushing out through Twitter and Instagram as well. Okay. Any uh, any models you want to promote? Any. Uh, right now, our main model is Teresa. You know, you've been working with her, Teresa. Definitely. She's best been doing a lot of work with DJ Malone. We definitely appreciate the work as well. He's always doing great projects. That's why, like you said, build up that network. Um, but, uh, yeah, Toya Record, she'll be coming back. She's coming yeah, back. She's coming back. Because <laughs> uh, 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 I'm trying to stretch it out. But uh, it, it's my thing is is that uh, I think... Uh, when you, when you work with models, and I, I experience this for myself, mm-hmm. you have to build their trust. 
And you have to make them believe, hey, I'm not trying to do anything with you. I'm trying to make money off of you. That's true. Point blank period. So, um, hey, I appreciate you uh, coming in, bro. Uh, We're going to get into the mix real quick. It's your boy, DJ Malone, Side Town Number Radio. And I got a special treat for you guys when we come back. Let's go. Hey, everybody. It's Jessica Simpson. This is Beyonce. This is Chicago. Chicago. 